Okay, welcome back to another video about how to use Moby Rise, uh, the free drag and drop software. Um, I was asked in one of the uh, videos, a comment in one of the YouTube videos, uh, about how to make this article text wider. So right now there's a lot of space kind of on both sides of it. And I was asked, well, how can we make that, let's say, as wide as uh, some of the content blocks like this. So how can we make it <clears throat> as wide as this? And you can see that there's quite a bit of difference between those two. So what we're going to do is, um, if you have the code editor, go into the code editor, and then you're going to unlock this block. And the thing that controls this is, are these two classes here. So column small 8, column small offset 2. Uh, I'm just going to show you what each of these things does first. So first, the column offset, it takes... <clears throat> well, let's offset it by 5, just so that we can show you. Okay, so what it does is it pushes everything this way, five columns. So this whole block all the way across is 12 columns. That's the way that they build the grid system in uh, Bootstrap. So it's 12 columns all the way across. This is taking up eight columns. And then it's pushing everything over to the right by five columns. So now we have 13. So you can see that it's kind of pushing everything off the page. Now if we go back and we take off the offset, and it doesn't exist, <clears throat> and then we look at it again, it's going to come all the way back over to our padding. So the 12 column starts here, and then we're only taking up 8. So it's going to stop about right there, about as far away on this side as this side. And then you're going to be left with 4 columns here that right now don't have any space in them because we haven't filled it with anything. So we have eight columns across, and you can see that we've changed the position just by removing the offset. Now let's say we want this to um, let's say we want this to come all the way across to where the padding is on this side. All you have to do, because it's twelve columns across, is just make this columns twelve, and then now it becomes full width. So it's taking up all twelve available columns. It's not pushing anything over to the left or the right. Uh, but now you have a full width, the same as this. You have a full width article block. You could also do the same thing uh, with this kind of uh, background text block. You can see here um, that the same sort of thing is going on. So this is how they're centering the text in the middle of the page. Uh, and then you have it here as well. So if you wanted this to change, you would just take off the offset. Change this to 12. And then now you have this, and you have a real nice wide uh, block of text. Now, one of the dangers of this is that on, on a desktop, it's going to be, if you try to read that, that's really wide and it's not easy to read. So unless you're gonna change the, um, the size of this text, which you could, you know, you could change it to like something really big and this might be easier to read because there are fewer words on each line. Um, but you can see that you start to run into some problems with line height and some things like that that make it less readable. So you need to be very careful about stretching these elements all the way across. Someone has come through and designed them so that uh, you get the maximum um, readability because they're only, they say, between 45 and 75 characters, uh, including spaces. That's the, that's like the minimum or the, the, the range of acceptable line lengths in a book or on the web. And so you have to think about those things too um, because you're designing something that other people have to use and not just trying to design something to cram a bunch of information into. So this is something that you can do, but you should be pretty careful about it. Now, once you get down to here, 
you know, it's not going to be so bad because it's going to squash everything down. So this is much easier to read on a tablet or even on a phone. Uh, you can see that it degrades, you know, very gracefully. So one of the ways um, that you can prevent that is to go back into your code editor. So instead of column small 12, you could do, uh, let's see, you could do column and then they use extra small. Extra small is a phone. Actually, we didn't have any problems on that. You could do column medium and then eight. Sorry. Um, so on a large screen, it's only eight, but as we go down, it is all the way across. If it were eight, it would only take up this many on a, on a medium and below. So what this code means in the bootstrap is that for any device that bootstrap is called medium, and you can look at getbootstrap.com to find out what the medium is. Um, on a medium size and up, so a medium or large size screen, then it needs to be eight columns. But on a small screen, which is a tablet, uh, up to a small screen, it's going to be 12. So from um, extra small, actually you could even do that. Extra small to medium, it's going to be uh, 12 columns across, which is the full width. And then from medium <clears throat> up, it's going to be um, 8 columns. So. Uh, you can play with that a little bit and see how that looks. Um, I'm not sure if you do the offset. Let's see. Um, medium. Offset. Two. Okay. Let's see if it offsets everything. So that actually works. That's pretty good. Uh, they have these um, kind of variable classes that you can use. Uh, you can use them uh, conditionally, I guess. So for a medium and up, you can set the offset to 2. Let's do it something crazy, just so we can test it and make sure. So we have a huge offset here, right? But on a medium and below, I mean a, a small size and below, there's no offset. But if we had done that to uh, small, then it's going to happen on the desktop, and it should happen here too. And you see how it's <clears throat> it's added that to everything from the tablet size all the way up to the desktop. So you can actually put that conditional class in there that says everything from a medium, uh, which is going to be a regular, like a small laptop or something like that. So everything from that size up to the largest screens, it should be eight columns with an offset of two. And then everything from extra small, which is a cell phone, the smallest sizes, from, from that size up to a laptop size, then it should just be 12 columns across. So that gives you a little bit of, uh, of responsiveness. And so now it's back to its original width as um, as the article and then here we have it full size all the way at full width and then at the mobile view we also have it full width so it's a pretty cool way uh, if you want to get more acquainted uh, with those things you can go to getbootstrap.com and I believe it's under the CSS So there are all kinds of things that are available, um, different types of classes, and they show you about how to use the grid up here. So it gives you all of these predefined classes and how, to, how the grid works, if you understand CSS. And then here are some of your grid options, and this is what the grid looks like. So we did column medium eight. 
right? So on uh, desktop screens and larger, it's going to be eight across, and then this column is going to be four across. So uh, it's actually a, a pretty cool thing whenever you get to understand these grid systems. It can help you lay out a grid very quickly. And in MobiRise, they use Bootstrap. So it's going to be getbootstrap.com and then go to CSS. And then you can start reading about the grid system and also some of these responsive utilities um, help you to understand you can hide things or show things uh, depending on the device size. So you can see up here. So extra small is less than 768 pixels. Small devices are tablets, which are <coughs> greater than or equal to 7068 and medium devices start at 992 pixels and large devices start at 1200 pixels so uh, whenever you see these sorts of things like LG you know that it means 1200 pixels and greater medium is going to be desktops so at about a thousand pixels to 1200 pixels so you can kind of get a feel for the way um, the way that the classes work in Bootstrap and MobiRise uses those Bootstrap classes so you can actually leverage the power of Bootstrap directly into MobiRise if you have the content or the uh, code editor so it's a if you're a more advanced uh, developer or you want to use this in a more advanced way um, paying that initial fee for the code editor is actually really worth it because you can do some some really great customizations just because it's hooked into Bootstrap. You can do some different things. Um, if you have any questions, please leave a comment down in the comments below. Uh, also, uh, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, I'm trying to produce a lot of content and whenever anyone has any questions uh, in the comments, I try to get back to them. And uh, what I wanna do is kind of create a community here of learning and sharing with one another if you have anything <clears throat> um, maybe that you've seen or that you tried uh, after using this video leave it in the comments so maybe everybody can learn from it uh, I appreciate you viewing I appreciate you uh, all the people who have kind of made this a little bit of a success and uh, it's been really great uh, folks from around the world uh, are watching and using MobiRise and uh, I think it's a really great piece of software and a lot of different applications in a lot of different situations and so if you have any questions just leave them down below uh, you can also email me my email is brian b-r-i-a-n at highwaywebconsulting.com and uh, also consider checking out some of the other um, things on this channel if you if you don't know what MobiRise is i have a playlist uh, showing you how to use the different blocks and things in MobiRise, and uh, i'll leave that in the notes as well so you can uh, you can click over to that and that might be something that you're interested in learning more about. All right. Thanks for watching.